Take courage, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. A few years ago, in South Louisiana, there was a lot of flooding that took place due to a quote-unquote 100-year flood. Areas that had had not flooded in a very long time found themselves underwater. And it was not due to a hurricane, as one might expect, but rather simply to prolonged periods of rain. And many people didn't think that it was going to be an issue and then found themselves stranded and uh, in need of assistance. The generosity that is associated with Louisiana, and in particular South Louisiana, where there's still something, there's a vestige of of Catholic charity there, kicked in because some people took it upon themselves to acknowledge the fact that it would be too late to wait for the official rescue teams to come into play to save these people from their circumstances. And so what was formed came to be called the Cajun Navy, the ensemble of private individuals who owned their own boats, got together and went out at their own expense to comb the areas of flooding to save people who were stranded, sitting on top of their roofs because everything was flooded. And we can imagine what relief that sight would have been for such a person. Someone who was now forced to be on the roof of their house because the water was so high, and with no guarantee of a rescue team coming to pick them up. And out of nowhere comes this individual, this average Joe six-pack, with his own boat to pick them up and bring them to safety, to bring them water, to bring them food, to bring them dry clothing. We can imagine that these people who are in these dire straits, no matter how organic their deodorant may have been, they themselves were probably pretty organic by that time. But that didn't stop these individuals from coming to their aid. And when we think of the reaction that that would have drawn out of those people, the idea that someone had come to save them at long last, what may have seemed like an eternity to them, we have something of the idea of the soul's reaction to our Lord's coming to save it. This gospel of today begins by saying that our Lord entered into a boat and crossed over and came into his own city. St. Augustine, he comments on this gospel today in the breviary, speaking about how that is our Lord's incarnation, how he gets into the boat of a human nature and comes into the city of mortal men from heaven. And he comes precisely to save What joy, what peace there is to the soul at this idea of the Savior that comes specifically for this particular soul. Not as part of a group effort, not as just part of the crowd, but that our Lord comes specifically for each and every soul. We can use the image that is recorded how our Lord is in this boat and he's coming across the water to this town. How our Lord is in the boat and even while in the boat he is calling to every soul, take courage, my child, take courage, my son, take courage, my daughter. Thy sins are forgiven thee. I want to forgive sins. And how once he gets there, 
This group of men bring him a paralyzed man, a paralytic. It doesn't say to what degree is paralyzed, but we can assume that it is rather thorough. The man is indeed an invalid. And he tells this man, this paralytic, who can't do anything for himself, he says, take courage, thy sins are forgiven thee. And of course, the Pharisees describe this murmur in their hearts, accusing our Lord of blasphemy, because only God can forgive sins. And our Lord reproaches them, why do you harbor evil thoughts in your hearts? That's a reproach to us as well. Why do we harbor evil thoughts in our hearts? Why do we always look down our nose? Why do we always see the glass half empty? And of course we can immediately conclude that, well, that's because we don't like this person. We don't like this circumstance. But what about when we have to deal with ourselves? Our own baggage, as they say. Why do you harbor evil thoughts in your heart? If God himself is willing to take the boat of a human nature in order to come and save you, why do we insist on making ourselves paralyzed? Why do we want to stay paralyzed? It's a point to examine in our consciences. Because we all have a, a hidden pocket of pride that we think isn't there. And as I said in a previous sermon, pride is very good. We're very good at camouflaging our pride. Giving it a different name, painting it a different color, a little bit of spackling, and that's show, that takes care of the problem, we think. But in our pride, we can think that we are just so great of a sinner that God couldn't love us, that God would somehow be incapable of taking our sins away. And therefore we are justified to not have this courage, to not take courage. But that's not the case. Our Lord wills to come, has willed historically to come in the flesh to redeem us from our sins. And he wills continually, you may say eternally, wills to redeem us from our sins by applying his merits to our souls. First and foremost, through the holy sacrifice of the Mass. But through all the graces that he gives us in every moment. And he doesn't want us to stay in this paralyzed state, unable to help ourselves, or so we think. He says, take courage, thy sins are forgiven thee. Now rise up, pick up your pallet, and go to your house. Rise up from your state of, sin of sinfulness that I have removed, Take up your own weaknesses, your own talents, your own qualities, your human nature, and go to your house. Walk home. And where is home? But heaven. Very simple program. Very simple program. But as I said to the sisters in their retreat, what is simple in itself is usually complicated to us. Like God. God is infinitely simple. But we have to compartmentalize everything because we have such a weak intelligence. 
And this program is so simple. But we tend to make ten steps out of one because of the weakness of our intelligence, the weakness of our will. But despite those shortcomings we may truly have, that we may feel evenly, we may feel the pressure of our own weakness. Our Lord is calling out to every soul, my soul and your soul, take courage. And if you have a fear of Him for some unknown reason, some unfounded fear, truly, who else is in the boat with Him but Our Lady? What can you possibly have to fear from a her? What child ever fears his mother? So if you have some lack of courage, this lack of confidence, this is a more accurate translation, this lack of confidence in God's desire to save your soul, to sanctify your soul, that same confidence and courage is wished for us by Our Lady. She has the same desires as her son. And when you find yourself harboring these evil thoughts in your heart, these doubts, these ruminations, these speculations, throw that out. Silence your imagination and look at who's in the boat coming to you. Not only our Lord, the Savior, but his mother also. And she is saying with him, always, take courage, son, take courage, daughter, thy sins are forgiven thee. Arise, take up thy pallet, and go to thy house. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.